Biden, th- th- this is this is a, a breakdown that was on uh, Left Voice. Let me let me look at who, uh, Ezra Bryan is the person that wrote this and makes a lot of good points in the article. Uh, basically, you know, he points out that we talk about the lesser of two evils quite often. Um, we we talk about the lesser of two evils when it comes down to political parties and you know that's the mature thing to do is we have to pick the lesser of two evils we have to compromise i mean to to me it's a bullshit argument is because the the working class is always asked to compromise progressives are always asked to compromise compromise your values compromise what you believe in and pick the lesser of two evils right because that's how the world works the world doesn't work in people that are good and just and the candidates that we actually want because that's how democracy should work no the 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 system and the world works in a way where you get to pick between a giant smoldering piece of shit and a giant frozen piece of shit and you're like which piece of shit do you want smeared on your face and you go well which one is gonna be less evil and it's like, but they're all pieces of shit. So uh, maybe can we have something that's not a piece of shit? And they're like, nah. Like, that's the whole system. And we should be asking for a better one. But in terms of Joe Biden, uh, first of all, the, 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 the guy starts the article by saying that the uh, 2020 election cycle would have lasted 1,258 days. That's crazy. That's so long. That's so exhausting. No wonder people get political fatigue. Right. Is because you bombard them with this shit on a constant basis. And it and it and it's not productive. It's just all entertainment. It's all performative bullshit. Biden is not the lesser of two evils. Uh, I've talked about this before several times. Um, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are virtually the same fucking candidate. The only difference is. Biden is a more polite evil, kind of. Just don't, as long as you don't bring up his record. As long as you don't bring up the 94 crime bill, the police bill of rights, uh, what he did to Anita Hill, his war on drugs, his uh, funding of the private pr- uh, prison industry, him writing the Patriot Act and being proud of it, him supporting segregation, uh, him uh, expanding uh, surveillance. Uh, him essentially not doing shit about the housing crisis when he was under Obama, him voting for every single war. Like this guy has met, has never met a war that he's not been a fan of. Just as long as you don't bring up any of that, he's a super polite dude. He doesn't need to yell at you. And he doesn't need to say that if you're, uh, uh, if you're a black person, that's not going to vote for him, then you're not really black. So, (laughs) Just, I mean, he's a nice guy as long as you don't bring up how shitty of a person he is. He's a very nice guy as long as you pretend none of the awful shitty things about him. Very nice guy. That's like saying dictators are very nice people as long as you ignore the fact that they're dictators. Just ignore, ignore the dictator... Ignore the fact that he's an authoritarian, and it's fine. Just don't. Just super nice guy. I've had friends do that. <laughs> you know, like I've had, I've had friends try to vouch for people, and they're like, they're a super nice. As long as you ignore the fact that they're a raging, violent alcoholic that put a hole through a wall, they're super nice. As long as you ignore the fact that they beat women on a constant basis, they're very nice people as long as you ignore the fact that he will try to punch you for just saying hello just ignore it but they're super like that's the argument that the democratic party pretty much makes for joe biden super polite guy america's back you guys so polite by bombing uh seven different countries at the same time oh it's the politeness is of american imperialism is off the charts Joe Biden is his <laughs> what Joe Biden believes in is virtually the antithesis of what most Americans want. Right. Most Americans want to defund the police. They want to, uh, uh, you know, fund education. They want to fund teachers. They want to fund social programs. They want to fund 
uh, psychologists and soci sociologists to be a part of their neighborhood. They want to have cops that are from the neighborhood that they are policing. And Joe Biden's against all of that. His plan to reform the police is to have the police shoot people in the leg. Maim them and then not give them health care. <laughs> oh, that's another thing Joe Biden is against. Medicare for all. Right. So if you're anybody that believes that everybody should have health care, everybody has the right to just have health care, not the access to health care. That's the buzzword there. Access to health care. That means that you have to deserve health care. Everybody deserves health care, period. Joe Biden does not believe that. Kamala Harris doesn't believe that. Anybody on Joe Biden's transition team and anybody that Joe Biden is picking up for, for the cabinet fucking does not believe that shit. Zero belief in that. He virtually stands against everything, everything that the American people actually want. Everything. The Most American people don't want war, but this guy is going to start bombing countries. He might not be so forceful about Iran, but he's going to use economic warfare against Iran. He's going to use economic warfare against countries like Venezuela. Thing people don't realize about the Democratic Party is that they are just as authoritarian as the Republican Party. If you don't dis if you don't agree with them, if you criticize them in any way, they they just smear you. They call you, uh, uh they use McCarthyism, right? They Russiagate you, or or they'll they say that you're a Trump supporter, right? Or they'll say that you're a Republican or a conservative or something. And it's like, no, we're progressives trying to push you to the side that you claim that you're on. What Biden will do is push the country even further to the right on a on a political scale. On a, on a people scale, uh, this is like the example of the Overton window, right? I think more people are on the left and the politicians are moving further to the right. So there's this massive political gap in the middle. Um, and I don't think I'm not talking about like, well, we need more centrism. No, I, I think we need to be pushed further to the left because it's not even being pushed further to the left. It's just what's logically correct. Giving having healthcare be a human right is just the logical thing to do, because you prevent sick people from being sick, or you prevent the punishment, an economic punishment of medical debt for someone being sick. How much sense does that make? The other thing that we need to be aware of is. Just because now Biden is in office, and I mentioned this, uh, you know, a few weeks ago in a couple different um, different videos here is. Uh, <laughs> but Trumpism is not done. I, I brought that up. Trump's not going away. Um, Trump and his followers are 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 going to stick around. And you saw how Biden deals with Trump. He doesn't deal with him very well. Uh the guy gets under and the reason why he gets under Biden's skin so much is because Biden and Trump are one and the same. They they virtually almost believe in the same shit. Um in attitude wise, they're all like as long as you don't criticize them, they're super fucking nice to you. The second you criticize them, that's when the anger comes out, right? They're both racist. They're both rapists. They're both misogynistic. They both are Republicans. <laughs> Trumpism is not going away. the The people are emboldened, and um, and and they are going to continue to make noise. They are going to look at the uh, Biden administration, and uh, and you're. Uh, and they're going to take their cue from from Donald Trump, who's not going to be off the limelight. I do believe that he is going to get some kind of segment on one of the cable news channels, if not all of them. Right. Like Morning Joe will fucking give him a, a segment every week, if not every day. Tucker Carlson might have him on his show, who, who I by the way, I do believe that Tucker Carlson is going to be the next big um, corporate media pundit. You know, uh, like you had Hannity. Uh, was it Hannity? I think it was Hannity 
during the Obama administration, then you had Rachel Maddow during the Trump administration. I think now you're going to see it shift over to Tucker Carlson. And I think the reason why it's going to be Tucker Carlson is because they're going to use that fracture of the progressives, right? So, so Tucker is going to start having more progressives on his show. Uh, he's he already invites like Glenn, Glenn Greenwald. He's had Tulsi Gabbard on his show a whole bunch. He's uh, had Jimmy Dore on his show, right? Uh, I don't know if this will happen. I, I fuck. I should. I I inter- had Lee back on the podcast today, and I fucking forgot to ask him if. Uh, <laughs> if he thinks Tucker Carlson will have him on now that he's had Jimmy Dore on the show, uh, even though Lee, uh, <laughs> Lee called Fox News a parade of propaganda, which is awesome. But, you know, I, I think Tucker, because he's going to do that, is going to end up getting a bigger platform on Fox News as the anti Biden, like the core voice of anti Bidenism. Um, and, uh, I think Tucker will probably give Trump a segment on his show. And they're all they're all the all the Trump pro Trump people, the 70 million of them that voted for him. Not well, not all 70 million, but the the diehard, the diehards. They'll take his cues from him. So he's not going away. Right. So this thought that that Trump is gone is is silly and you know wishful thinking uh so so really what what's happened in my in my viewpoint is um hey things have gotten fucking worse (laughs) because now we have this neocon uh crypto fascist to deal with and we still have fucking trump (laughs) like it's still fucking there so we have to push back on biden even harder so we have to start rejecting a lot of the things that biden is going to put out there I mean, even if you look at the way that he's brought in his transition team and his cabinet, he put people like Neera Tandon. Neera Tandon's in charge of the budget. She's a war hawk. She wants to get the oil from Libya because she thinks it belongs to America. She's a sociopath. This person shouldn't be in charge of the budget. I talked about this on a podcast yesterday. Is like Neera Tandon being in charge of the budget, the Office of uh, uh, Budget Management, is like having your gun-toting uncle that believes in conspiracy theories and is waiting for the race war to happen by having some fucking bunker filled with guns and canned food be in charge of your family's bank account. You wouldn't want that person in charge of the bank account because 80% of it is going to just be more guns and the other 20% is going to be fucking canned food. And you can't live like that because Neera Tandon is going to spend most of her money to expand the military budget. (laughs) She's anti-Social Security. She's anti-Medicare. She wants to kill health insurance in this country. She wants to take away all the social. I mean, she is a fucking Republican through and through. She just disguises herself as a fucking Democrat. And now it's uh, it's it's under the veil of identity politics is like, oh, look at the women, the women that we're putting in. That's really nice that we're making the strides. But uh, guess what? It's still sociopathic. Like these women are still sociopaths, just like the men that are put into the position are. The problem isn't the gender. The problem is the sociopathy. I am what what I am hoping that happens under the uh, uh, Biden administration is that this fucking rose colored lens that we look at identity politics through is shattered. It's very nice, and and I've had this discussion and argument with uh, a ton of my friends, right? Uh, friends that are on the progressive side and friends that are more on the liberal and conservative side. I've had this discussion with them. Um, they're excited that Kamala Harris is the first female vice president, and that's very nice. Because for a country that has been as racist and sexist as America is, that is, the, in in some way, shape, or form, a stride. The problem is Kamala Harris is the, one of the worst women in office. You should be looking at who she is, not just the fact that she's a she. It should go beyond that. And the problem with um, 
with identity politics is that's where it stops. It stops at the identity and it doesn't go any further than that. So the other thing we need to start stop believing is that the Democratic Party can be reformed, that the Democratic Party is going to move to the left because it's not going to move to the left. So I think we need to just fully stop supporting this party uh, because they're not going to move to the left. We we have to push back and criticize and point out the fact that, you know, they are practicing some form of republicanism. But the Democratic Party has always been pro-money, pro-greed, and pro-corporate. They've always been that way. Uh, and, and they're hypocrites in the way that they present themselves. Um, they're gaslighters. Look at the Obama administration. We were coming off of a very war-heavy eight years under the Bush administration, and uh, Obama kind of ran on this hope and change of possibly being anti-war, and then he ramped it up from two to seven. We started engaging in more wars in the Middle East. They're hypocrites. He supported the military-industrial complex. He expanded surveillance, expanded the intelligence community's powers, basically giving more strength to the Patriot Act which was something that the Obama administration was supposed to change. We can even go all the way back to the 1800s, right? Uh, at the at the real infancy of the Democratic Party, they were still for the industry. They were for the titans. They were for the, 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 the timber and the coal. Uh, that's who they supported. The Democrats supported a lot of the industry giants because they knew that the industry giants could funnel money into their campaigns and make large donations, get their employees to make large, make some kind of donation and use their political power to get rich. Eugene Debs tried to reform the Democratic Party in 1884. He was um, in the House of Representatives in Indiana. He served under the Democratic Party and he basically saw that the Democratic Party has zero intention uh, in in doing anything for the working class, what they want to do is support and protect corporate wealth because corporate wealth then in turn means that they get reelected and paid more. It's the party has always been bought and sold. So we have to stop thinking that the Democratic Party is going to be reformed from within. I'm not th this this notion of pushing back on Joe Biden isn't to push him to the left. That's not going to happen, but rather to expose the party for what it is, expose Joe Biden for what he is so we can stop supporting people like him. Mona, yeah, he gets angry when he's questioned. Yeah, Joe Biden doesn't want to answer those questions. He's very, very proud of that record. And you keep saying that over and over again. And when you call when you call that into question, it shines a light on the hypocrisy that is the Democratic Party. <laughs> uh, and they get pissed about it. Democracy is back. Yes, democracy is back. Uh, abort you. Thank you. I'm I'll, I, 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 <laughs> it finally happened. Somebody got unsubscribed from my channel without even trying. Uh, so that's a milestone for the old Krish. Uh, I'm glad you, I'm glad you got uh, uh, subbed in and, and were able to find the live stream. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Dolores. Hello, Dolores. It's good to see you. Uh, I grew up in New York. Do more research on Trump and you will see that uh, he is not the racist. The media establishment led the people to believe. Also, I'm not pro-establishment party e uh, either. I voted Green Party in 2016 and 2020. Good for you. Uh, I, I I do wish that the 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 Greens were a little bit more organized on a national level. Uh, I know many people from uh, local chapters who I believe um, are far more organized and uh, politically savvy than um, than the national chapter. I know this year there was some controversy over uh, how Howie Hawkins won the the primary. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of that as as well as I would like to. It, it, it kind of it happened and there was a lot of buzz about it, but I wasn't able to keep up with it. As far as the Trump issue goes, um, I, I will look into it as as uh, it, as you suggested. I uh, the the things that I remember reading were um, 
he would have black people show up to uh, view his apartment complexes and put a mark by them so to not sell apartments uh, to them. And uh, there's the the Central Park Five was the other thing, though, from looking into that there there that one does have a higher likelihood that it was just him trying to take a controversial stand for the sake of taking a controversial stand. Um, yeah, I, I, I've had that. That's a longstanding discussion between myself and, a, uh, and some conservative friends as well is, uh, is, is Trump racist? Uh, my, my leanings are, are that he still is, um, whether that racism is, is overt or not, uh, I guess is more of more in question. Uh, t- but to me, he has had some racist practices, um, but as bombastic as he is, he doesn't come out and just <laughs> uh, say like a racial epithet, though I, I feel like I'm surprised that he hasn't. Um, the other thing I will say that kind of leads me into that direction, too, is his very open support for white, white supremacy and his in, inability to denounce it. Several options. I mean, it became a, it became like a fucking gaff or whatever from the debates. But uh, just him not being able to say like he denounces white supremacy is uh, is in and of itself kind of a problem. Mona gave you the heads up. Uh, abort you. That, that I'm I'm glad she did. She's a gem. Uh, thank you, Mona. You're you're awesome. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.